Hi, it's Dwyer. RichardDwyer.com. Um, keeping it free. Blogspot.com. I'm a civil attorney in Northern California. Let's talk about the terrible, atrocious, horrible mass murder that took place at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. You know, for me, the most amazing uh, fact, um, one of the oddest things about the case is that 45 minutes into the attack, right, 45 minutes in, the shooter, Omar Mateen, actually calls a local news producer, right, and says to him, I'm the shooter. This is a psychopath who wants publicity, right? He's not a soldier committed to a cause who is satisfied just doing something in furtherance of that cause, right? No matter how misguided the cause may be, right? No, this is a different personality type. This is one who wants infamy. This is son of Sam, David Berkowitz's personality type, right? He wants the cameras. He wants people to know. He wants you to know that he's the one who did this horrible crime. Now I know in 911 calls, according to law enforcement, and in this call, 45 minutes in, to the news producer, right? And that news producer's name, by the way, is Matthew Gentile, right? He works at News 13 in the Orlando area. He's the one who's gone public with this. Right? In these calls, I understand that Martin claims that he did this for ISIS. I also understand that ISIS issued an official statement through the Amak News Agency in which they took responsibility for this terrible mass murder. Right? But the purpose of this video is to question that premise, right? I don't believe that this young man was receiving orders from ISIS, right? I believe this is a guy whose first wife, right, told the press that she thought he was mentally unstable, that he was bipolar, Understand, in 2013, this guy told co-workers that he was affiliated with Hezbollah, right? He earlier was questioned by the FBI, law enforcement, and he claimed that he had a link with the Zarnoff brothers, who did the atrocious Boston Marathon bombing. Right? They're, of course, affiliated with Al-Qaeda, not Hezbollah, not ISIS. Right? This is a guy, quite frankly, who has blurred these different groups in the past. Right? ISIS, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, folks, they're different entities. Understand? They're not on the same page, right? A Hezbollah person is not suddenly going to say, oh, yeah, I'm with Al-Qaeda, right? That's a different outfit with a different set of values. Now, the FBI, in looking at this claim by Mateen that he knew the Zarnoff brothers, found that there was no link between him and them. But understand, it establishes the pattern of this guy claiming to
be affiliated with parties that he doesn't know, that he has no personal involvement with, right? This story to me seems to be more of a mental health story than it is of an actual affiliation between someone who is having mental health problems and ISIS, the terrorist group. Now, after the fact, as you can imagine, if bad things happen to Americans, right, ISIS is going to come out and say, especially if the shooter says, I'm with ISIS, right? ISIS is going to come out and say, hey, we support the shooter, right? The million dollar question here is whether ISIS even knew about the shooter before the mass murder, right? I question that thesis. Right, let me say this too. There was another Floridian who actually traveled overseas and became the first American to die actually out there, um, you know, doing terrorist acts for one of these terrorist groups. In this case, the group was an Al Qaeda affiliate. The group's name was. Jibhat, and forgive me if I mispronounce these words, Jibhat al-Nusra, right? The individual was Monair Muhammad Abdusala, right? Now, would it surprise you to learn that Omar Mateen claimed to know him? Here again, the FBI investigated, right? Understand, red flags go off with co-workers and with people who hear information like this, right? So someone alerted the FBI and the FBI investigated this alleged link and found it was overstated by Mateen. That Mateen, if he knew this guy at all, barely knew this guy. Right? And so what you really have here is a guy, right, who is Muslim, but who is disturbed. And he's reaching for affiliations that he doesn't have. Right? He's doing things, supposedly in the name of groups, that he's not officially a member of, that he hasn't spoken with, that he hasn't joined, that haven't accepted him as a member, right? Terrible bombing, Boston Marathon, it's all over the papers. Suddenly here's this guy with no link to the bombing, doesn't know the guys who did the bombing isn't part of the group who did the bombing. And here's a guy trying to draw attention to himself, just like he was 45 minutes in to this terrible murder. He's trying to draw attention to himself, right, by claiming a link. Right, and so don't get me wrong here. I don't support terrorism at all. Right? I don't. What I do support is trying to get at the truth of what actually happened. I know ISIS is claiming responsibility for this atrocity. Right? But I think if you're someone looking for the truth, you have to look past that claim. I believe in the coming days we're going to find out that even though Mateen traveled to Saudi Arabia, Right? I think we're going to find out that this guy doesn't have a direct link with any of the groups that he has claimed a link with. Right? Hezbollah in 2013, FBI disproved that. Al-Qaeda and these Boston bombers, 
FBI disproved that. Now it's ISIS, right? How many terrorists do you feel would call 911 before an attack or would call news people during the attack, right? The attack, in my opinion, for this individual was just a way to get his name out there, right? Much more so than it was to further a religious agenda. Let me say this too, and it's interesting. I understand that there have been past acts of terrorism that take place in the terrorist life, right? San Bernardino, that couple, the guy actually worked at the place that he shot up, right? A little bit unusual, but I understand it's happened before. Now here, the question is why the Pulse nightclub? Right? We're finding out now, and I believe much more of this information is going to come out, that Omar Mateen was actually a regular at the club. That Omar Mateen had been there so many times that people at the club actually recognized him. Now the question is, what was his purpose in going to the club? Right? I don't believe every visit that this guy made to this club was in preparation for this attack. I actually think looking through the facts in YouTube Nation, give me your views in the comment section to this video, looking at the facts of this case, I actually believe that this guy went to the club as a patron of the club. Right? He wanted to get out, he wanted to meet people. He was there to socialize. That's what I believe is going on here. Right? We know that this guy asked at least one former male classmate out on a date. We know that. We know that this guy who met his second wife online was also online using a app to meet men, right? We know that, right? And so my point is you're gonna hear about this guy being at the Pulse a few times, right, before the murder. Now there's some point in time, right? Because his current wife admits she went and cased the place with him. At some point in time, things cross over. Right? He goes from being a, pa a patron out to socialize at the club to actually casing the place in furtherance of this crime. Right, But here again, you have to ask yourself, okay, what were the guy's initial motives in going to the club? Right, I believe this is a young man who went to this club to socialize. Right, then at some point in time, right, the guy's urge, his ego to be known, right, to be infamous, takes over. And the guy, of course, decides to pick a cause that's in the news and to use the club as a means by which to get noticed. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Understand information is breaking every day, right? This video is made on June the 15th, 2016. Obviously, some news is going to come out that might support these arguments, that might discredit these arguments. But based on what I'm, I've heard here, I believe this is a confused guy who was mentally disturbed, right? Who's reaching for affiliations, with groups that he doesn't have, right? Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, right? ISIS is in the news. This guy picks ISIS, claims that he's doing it for ISIS. I think the evidence is going to show this guy barely had any communication with ISIS, right? They're a cause of 
convenience for him. This guy's real agenda was to give a great speech, right? Was to do something atrocious and then give a speech. Look at me, right? In 2013, he's talking to co-workers and saying, hey, I'm involved with terrorist groups, right? You know, Hezbollah. Then it's the Boston Marathon bombing, Al-Qaeda, right? He picks a fellow, uh, a fellow Floridian who actually was involved with these groups and says, hey, I know that guy, right? Now it's Al-Qaeda, excuse me, ISIS, right? There's so many you start to lose track. The real story here, in my opinion, is mental illness, a need for infamy. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.